Welcome to the Been There Doing That podcast. I'm Robert Scrivener. And I'm Gayla Scrivener. We left the 9 to 5 grind, downsized, and our goal is to have freedom to live and to work from just about anywhere. Yay! We are back with... Another episode. exhilarating episode. Oh, don't sound so excited. Okay. <laughs> Just another plain old boring episode. No, it's not, but we are kind of antsy. Antsy as in we need to start moving more. I know. We are back in Missouri and kind of hunkered down, working hard. You're doing a lot of music gigs. A lot it's, of music it's the gigs. Time to, it's time to make hay while the sun shines. Okay, what I kind mean, of <laughs> saying is that, Robert? That means uh, you strike while the iron's hot. I've heard that one, <laughs> but I hadn't heard the other one. <laughs> All right, now oh, you have. Oh, I have. I have. And I think that I'm a little sad that we're not going on a, uh, what did you do? You just ate something. <laughs> <laughs> it was spicy. I think it was a red pepper flake. Oh. I found it on my shirt. <laughs> to see your face. Mm. That's spicy. Don't just eat anything that you well, see. Well, it looks on your like shirt. an M M&M. and <laughs> M, <laughs> but <laughs> I really want to eat it. But I don't know if it's an M and M. Yeah, that's a story for another time. Yeah. Let's just make people wonder where that story came from. I ate it, and it was not an M M&M. and <laughs> M. Your dad would know exactly, exactly where that story came from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, anyway, we're hunkered down in Missouri. You're playing a lot of music gigs. That's the plan. And we are doing a lot of client work and just kind of have our blinders on and just working yeah, and not traveling so much. But um, that's okay. That That's okay because I think we're kind of, I'm kind of sad because I, I think it's hit me that we're not having like a traditional, our traditional fall overland trip. Yeah. We're we're still moving though. We're still moving. October is slated to do some different events than what we've done in the past. Yeah. And uh I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. What what are what are we planning? Uh something in Connor Prairie. What is Connor Prairie? I ain't quite for sure. Well, it's some sort of attraction. Read, it It is uh, based off the 1800s, I believe. Yeah, it's an attraction. Did you know that it's a part of the Smithsonian? No. It is. And you've become a member? I did. Yes. Yes, I did. And we I can forgot. go We can go to, there's a lot of different, uh, there's a whole list of. What would you say, 90? I believe so, of different attractions uh, that our ticket, our membership will pay for. So. Yeah. Uh, for a year, and um, you're going to be doing some really cool things, and we'll we'll let people know about that in October. So, so Connor Prairie, uh, for those that don't know, is in Indiana. Mm-hmm. So and I'll be there for but we're not four, going, five, six days. We're not going to be staying in the rooftop tent. And right after nope. that, we need to be in St. Louis and go to a conference for our. It's a CRM, Customer mm-hmm. Relationship Management System. Mm-hmm. If that, if you know what that is, do but. now. <laughs> it's a user conference. Year. It's a user conference, and it it, w- it was really a great thing to go to, and picked up some new clients and new friends, and learned a lot of things. So that was great. Well, wow, good. So we're doing that again this year. Well, moving along. I'm excited that in the next couple of weeks, we are going to be publishing some interviews that we've had with some people that we've met along the way. We've had some great phone calls. Yes, we have. And we've recorded those interviews and we'll be releasing those out to the world. So I'm excited about that. And I thought it would be a fun episode if we would ask ourselves some of the same questions that we asked our interview people people so yeah you know why why do we do this robert why do we overland why do we why like do it why do we yeah why do me and you yeah i want i want first you to speak for me <laughs> <laughs> okay no, well, got what, that done 
What attracts you to the overland lifestyle? Seeing places that I haven't been off the beaten path. Yeah. Well, I mean, to me, overlanding, living out of your vehicle, it's not like plush accommodations. No. Nope. And every time that we go and go anywhere, we have to set up. I mean, we have yeah. to set up our bed. We have to set up our kitchen. It's not like things are just... park just, and there it is. There it is. And that's... That's different. It's a totally different experience than the RV experience. Mm-hmm. Which we've done. Which we've done, and we still do. We live in our yeah. our RV. But why why being nomadic? Why is that? Why do you like that so much? I like seeing different places. <laughs> just that's, just like seeing yeah, different places. Yeah, and I have. There's plenty out there that I haven't seen yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe I want to settle down in one. Yeah, we don't know exactly where we want to settle down someday. Yeah. Someday. I'm ready. Not yet, though, but I'm ready to go (laughs) see them. Go see see things. Yeah. What what has been our biggest, or in your mind, what is your biggest oh my gosh moment in all of our travels? Doesn't matter what vehicle. Oh my. Yeah. We've had several. I mean, oh my gosh. Well, let's talk about some of those oh my goshes. Um... What was that bridge out the uh, Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel? Yes. And, uh, oh, that uh, uh, North Carolina. Yeah. We were out there. I had been to the Chesapeake Bay Bridge before, and I thought that w- would be an experience that you would so enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. And I had gone many, many years ago when it was just one bridge. Now there's two, one going one mm-hmm. way and one going the other. And what that bridge, it's a bridge, and then it goes down into a tunnel under the water, then Mm -hmm. up a bridge, and then in the water, water, so that there's not any drawbridges. And that's where these big big ships go through through and everything. And it's quite the modern marvel. Yeah, (laughs) I think it it was on that show. And I thought it would be so great. And we were driving the RV, 38-foot RV, with the Jeep pulled mm-hmm. behind and there was an exit that said buses welcome tour buses welcome yes too. so i'm thinking this is great we are the tour bus size yeah. right yeah so we go in there it's dusk and we go in there and do our little before things they close yeah. yeah and and we i don't know get a snack get a little patch or Take whatever some pictures. yeah then we get out and it's you have to turn around and go back the way that you came, yeah. not an exit that, like at a rest area, that you can you get off and then merge right, merge back, right back on. Not, oh no! No, you had to you had to back up, yeah. and you can't back up with a tow vehicle. No, not of that stature. No, no. not with the jeep behind. We it. tried a little bit. We were a little bit we less. We succeeded in until the front bumper of the Jeep touched the back bumper of the RV. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. And that was a tight, tight spot. Oh, what a tight spot it was. Yeah. And it was quite the oh, my gosh moment. Yes, it was. And I knew I needed to be quiet. <laughs> it was one of those you could read my face. Oh, my goodness. We unhooked the Jeep and... I drove the Jeep. We were able to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you were able to get that RV turned around. Mm -hmm. I followed you in the Jeep, and we got across the bridge. So you didn't really get to enjoy the experience at all. Because in the RV, you thought you were going to hit the roof or the the ceiling of the... I think it was uh, 13.6 height, Mm -hmm. and we are 12.9. Yeah. So there's like, and I was not in the vehicle with you as you were going through the bridge and the tunnel yeah. and everything like that. We got across and p- immediately pulled over into like a rest area, and because we needed to hook the jeep back up, but mm-hmm. the tow bar bent a little bit, and mm-hmm. we had we were able to put it back on, but we needed to find a new tow ca- tow bar pretty quickly. Clarksboro. New Jersey. Yeah. After that was all said and done, and I got, you know, we were driving down the road, and it was dark, and I was back in the RV, and 
And uh, we were driving down the road, and I kind of looked at you, and it's like, Mm -hmm. we were in a tight spot. (laughs) We were in a tight spot. (laughs) And you laughed, but I knew I had to be quiet at the time of the the stress. You know what not to say at the right opportune time. I try to. I try to. And there was a security guard or something, if I remember, kind of out there with us. (laughs) And I was like, why are tour buses welcome when you have to turn around like this? I mean, goodness. But we made it. We Uh, made it. Yep. What was another tight spot or oh my gosh moment? I think it was the um, uh, the Buckeye Adventure. Oh, we just talked about that just yes. recently. Yeah, yeah. Buckeye debacle. <laughs> if you haven't heard that one, that one's very recent. So you just go back yeah. a couple of episodes. We'll link to it in in the show notes. But uh, yes, you got out of the jeep. And walk down a while. I I just remembered you just like, I've got to. I'm going. I've got. I'm, I'm got to go think. for a walk. I've gotta got to go for a walk. Okay. So left me and Oscar, and you went for a walk, came back and said, "Prepare to get dirty." And I did, but I didn't get as dirty as I thought I would. Well, that's the positive note. Mm-hmm. You know, I just throwing the worst out there, and you you got the good of it. Do you know what pops into my mind? No. The dismal swamp. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Well. I don't see that as a, oh my gosh, moment. Well, to me it kind of was, because it could have been very hazardous to our little babies. That's true. Our three little wiener dogs. We were getting fuel in some city. Mm -hmm. I don't remember where, but you hit a little bump. It was like mm, three, four inches curb. And this is in our RV. Turning getting out of a gas station Mm -hmm. and just the back tire caught it and whoop and it and we have storage in our rv that's way up high and i make homemade soap and just throw it out there you make soap i make soap you're a soap maker and one of the ingredients in soap is lye l y e yes and it's very caustic caustic and poisonous Mm -hmm. and hit that bump and our up above storage, just flung open, and the container that my lie was in just shattered, burst it open. It w- it was made out of plastic, so just the lid just oh. popped right on off. I heard, I, in my mind, I see a. <laughs> and our dogs, I don't I don't know if this is true of all wiener dogs, but all three of our wiener dogs, they like to lick the floor. Oh, they yeah. just lick, 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 Dang lick, lick, floor lick, lickers. Lick. And I was so afraid that our little dogs were going <laughs> to lick on the uh, the lie. And I was so, so nervous about that. So I had to scoop up my little doggies and put them in their little cages. cages. Yeah, we had little kennels. And we had to find a place to pull off so that we could take care of all that lie. That happened to be the dismal swamp. Yeah, that was a that was a pivoting point or a turning point. Our turning point. Whether we want to continue on or do we want to just go? Oh, for that trip, we were trip. going. We were going up the uh, uh, outer banks and everything. On and up to Vermont. Yeah, we decided to go on up to Vermont, yep. but we stopped at Dismal Swamp and we vacuumed like we've never vacuumed before. And we vacuumed pretty good. Yeah. But this time, we vacuumed like there wasn't no tomorrow. And washed and washed and just, I I was so concerned about that lie. But I don't think we learned our lesson because, hey, I <laughs> still make soap. You still make soap, still put it up above. Yeah, but we don't drive the uh, RV very much anymore, <laughs> if at all. All right, one of the things that we ask other folks is, how do you earn a living and travel too? Wow. Well, I do a lot of music gigs to pay for traveling. Yeah. But, you know, you can do it in travel. It's just a little more difficult. Your the, the music piece of our income kind of happens to rein us back to Missouri, mm-hmm. which is not a bad thing. But it's something that, okay, well, you play music. You've got to be at certain places at certain times and, and things like that. So... When we travel, you have to take time off for music. And I, th- I think it's interesting. 
do you know how many people, when they find out that you play guitar, they wonder if you put it in the Jeep? Yeah, when we go out west yeah, for a month. Yeah, like, like you play guitar like all the all time. The time. You Sit don't. around a campfire. You don't. That's not your style. No. It may be some other people's style, but you only play when you like make money. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You're not one to go out and... Willy-nilly just pick one up and start playing around a campfire. Yeah. And so you even go incognito. You don't even tell people now no. now that it's public, but people do know that you are. Yeah. They yeah. just go to the website and find out. I know. If they it's read part the about you. page, they would know. It's about you. Yes, yes. And it's a part of you. And you're a very good musician, but I could be biased, but... I think you are. Yeah. We started out, though, thinking that we would be like work campers mm -hmm. and try to find jobs and freelance that way and get some of our campground fees paid. and yeah. exchange for yeah, so many hours. And try to find different gigs that way. And we figured out early on that that's not our it's cup not of tea. for us. Mm -mm. We decided to start our own business, our own virtual assistant business, and grow that and continue to to grow that and start more online community type things. And that fits better with us because we can do that from anywhere and we're not geographically tied. But it takes work to, to build a business and that is okay. That That's what we've chosen. We, we decided not to wait until we had this huge nest egg of a savings to get started, we decided to... Blow it slowly. Blow it slowly. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to budget differently and, and make decisions on how to continue with the lifestyle and yeah. grow the lifestyle instead of wait. It's like, oh, someday I'm going to travel for a month or someday I'm going to do this. It's like, okay, when are we going to do this? That someday may they not get there. Right, right. And we're at a point right now that we're ready for the next level of our travel experience, I think. We've been talking a lot. Yes, we've been talking about it. Because right now our current setup is such that when weather hits, it gets pretty uncomfortable to work and to cook and things like that in the rooftop tent. Yes, we have some priorities that we, well, necessities that we need to have in our next vehicle. Yeah, and we are actively looking for the, our next overlanding vehicle. And we're not really revealing exactly what it is right now, but a few of our close friends know. Yeah. Because we might be changing our minds because we've been talking about it, oh, all year so far. And the type of vehicle has changed. It has. You know, since January. <laughs> so and it still may be that, mm -hmm. but in a different way. But what that involves is we need to downsize even further and make different decisions. Because we have hobbies and things that we like. Yeah. And you are doing more and more with leather work, and that's a part of our business of our income. That is true. And that takes up a certain amount of space. Yeah. Yeah, but that's not a bad thing <laughs> no. because our trips for next year, we're already planning next year trips, and we would like them longer. But what kind of events can we go to to earn income? Exactly. And meet new people and grow that that side of the business of leather work. But then there may be events that would benefit the other piece of our business, you know, the virtual assistant piece. So it's all good stuff. But another big aspect with us is being able to take our dogs. That is true. Not just one. No. Not just two. All three. All three dogs. And And honestly, I think that... Having the three dogs, it does, it, it, that's something to consider. I mean, having pets is something to consider when you travel It makes time. no difference if it's a pet turtle <laughs> or a wiener dog. No. It, it, it's a pet. It's a pet, and I'm not prepared to give up our dogs. Nope. We adopted them a long, long time ago, and... Ten years ago. Yeah, and I just don't want to 
give them up. I think that we can travel with them until the end of their little lives. We can make a certain type of travel happen. Yeah. But it can't, I'm convinced it can't happen in the uh, Jeep. <laughs> no, there's not enough room. No, for there, it really is. Five of us in a Jeep Wrangler. And wiener dogs are little barkers. Oh, they like to bark. They do, and and they have to get used to the the travel again. So Oscar's d- does pretty well. Yeah, he does excellent. But once you get more than one dog together, you have the pack animal syndrome. <laughs> they just want to, you know. They protect mama and daddy. Yeah, they do, and and that's just something that we have to consider. And and so our next vehicle is something that can accommodate them, and we are able to camp more in um, cognito when we need to, like in a parking lot. Yeah. And some might call that stealth. Oh, okay. Incognito and stealth. stealth. Okay. Yeah, same thing. Okay. Ish. Ish. And then it needs to be a fairly comfortable place for the dogs. Yeah. You know. When we have to like go into the store, <laughs> so yeah, they've got to have you know fresh air and stuff, and not be left out in the yeah. the hot temperatures. Yeah, that means I got to stay in the uh, the vehicle with the AC running. Yeah, yeah. While you go in the store, I guess so. I guess I that's guess how it's so. going to work. We'll figure it out. Yeah, well, and it's going to be another transition. And I remember when we first got the RV. And we took our first trip. It was nerve-wracking, but we got used to it, and now it's kind of a lifestyle. Our first trip was really from Florida to Colorado. Yeah. And back in 12 days. It was a fast trip, and now we have a whole different philosophy on how we travel. It's a lot much slower. Yeah. Much slower, and building a lifestyle or a business that fits into that lifestyle is really important to us. And, you know, go take it slow. What's, what do you think the biggest challenge is with this lifestyle, Robert? I know, for me, mm-hmm. it is finding you internet. Yeah. Gas, food, and all that's you know, yeah. But to stay working is internet. I think that's the biggest challenge... And I think if we were out on the road and not having to feel like we had to come back yep. at a particular time, like when we go for a month or, you know, or six weeks or something like that, that still seems like awfully fast travel. Yeah. And if we were able to even just not worry about it to be anywhere at a particular time, I think it's like, okay, we're here for three or four days. We don't need to be at this. We don't need to be home in two weeks so let's stay here and work and I think that my my biggest challenge is getting into a schedule and a routine when we're traveling for such a short amount of time because there's it takes three four or five days to get in a routine I think so yeah and then figuring out the internet and the scheduling and the projects and we we have some really great projects that we do for for clients and it it worries me if i just don't you know i'm i'm still experimenting with all the processes to make sure that we're not behind deadline and and things like that but i like that we are utilizing and learning more about being able to be connected yeah i like you know our library time oh yeah I like the library. Moab's been my favorite library. Yeah. Yeah, that's been a great library. And your pieces of the job, um, because you do a lot of podcasting and video stuff and everything like that, you don't necessarily need internet for that type of stuff. It's when we have to actually upload. Upload them, send them to the client, Mm -hmm. put them in Dropbox or whatever. But for things like website updates and got to have and it continuously inter- in, and uh, email stuff because we use Mailchimp or Constant Contact things like that web based products that we use for our clients oh my goodness now that does get a little stressful so and sometimes we write articles and things like that and gotta research so yeah <laughs> gotta look it up right then right. 
So it, it's a challenge, but I don't Nothing know. Nothing we can't handle. Nothing we can't handle. We made it this far. Yeah, we're going to go further. <laughs> what's what's the biggest reward in our travels? Seeing places that I haven't seen and getting to camp there for a night or two that has perfect internet, nobody else around, mountains, water, snow. Snow. Snow in the distance, but right. I, I want sure, it warm. Why not? I want it no like 69. No humidity. <laughs> No humidity. That's your perfect campsite. That's my perfect campsite. Have we had one of those? Uh, we've been pretty close. Yeah, we have had some pretty great close. campsites. That's what you're looking for. Yep, yep. Nope. Not. Nobody else around, just, you know, snow-capped mountains in the distance, no humidity. Well, that's interesting that, you know, we just said that we need to get into a routine, but yet overlanding breaks us from a routine because we don't know what's going to happen we don't know if we're going to have internet exactly very well and we can try to plan for things and and then something comes up and we have to break camp and and go work it's getting you know? that time of setup and tear down quicker mm -hmm. that's minimal setup time for camp minimal tear down time and just pack and go does that real quick the the tear down and the setup detracts a lot of folks they they think we're crazy because we've got to do all of that yeah. what, how do you feel about the tear down and the well we've got it down kind of pretty good because mm -hmm. we've been doing it four years on the rooftop tent mm -hmm. but to simplify that i think that the biggest reward is the accomplishment that i feel that we've done this type of stuff that we've gone out that we we see these yeah. and we're not much into seeing cities no and we like to find the most remote places and yes we see a lot of trees and a lot of mountains and yeah. a lot of desert and a lot of road not all of that has perfect internet either no but we we see all of the same but it's different i'm just it takes my breath away to see oh nature's wonders that's that's There's what i like There's a big hole in the ground called the grand canyon yes <laughs> that's a big hole wow it makes you feel small it does and everything that just occurs in nature it just astonishes me and even when we're you know around home and then just walking yep. around in local woods and stuff like that i just find that very satisfying yeah it just helps me think clearer clearer well, yeah yeah well i think i think that that's about it are you sure well you, you got the list i, I did i didn't cheat and here look at it. you can look at it see if there's anything oh, right. that you want to to mention but what's your favorite place you've visited so far oh i skipped over that one yeah my favorite place let me think i like i like the mountains and and I, I don't know. I don't know if I have a favorite. I got an answer. What's your answer? I haven't visited it yet. What? I don't know. I haven't, oh. <laughs> I haven't been there yet. I haven't visited it yet. Visited it yet. Yeah, I, I have not been there yet. Yeah, I, I still have a lot. I have a lot on my list that I, I like to... My favorite place could be in Idaho. I don't know. I haven't been there yet. I haven't been to Idaho yet, but we want to go. We want to go into Wyoming, which we have been a little bit, but yep. not much. And Montana and Northwest. Pacific Northwest. Yeah. You're so on the radar. <laughs> Just letting you know. Okay. I think that we still have so many places to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You ready? I think so. Let's wrap it up, Robert. All right. Where can people find us? At BenThereDoingThat.com. Guess what? What? They can also find us on YouTube. Been there doing that. And Instagram. Been there doing that. And Facebook. Been there doing that. I think there's a theme there. Been there doing that. Yes. So until next time. We'll catch you out there. Been there doing that. Been there doing that. Yeah. Been there doing that. Doing that. Doing that. Doing that. <laughs> doing that. Toodaloo. Yeah, bye. Bye.